Mr. Rex is a 35-year-old male who presented to the A&E department complaining of right-sided upper back and flank pain. He has seen various naturopathic physicians for these complaints before his urgent arrival to A&E this evening. On further history, he reported having had six weeks of intermittent fevers accompanied by intense shivering. Hi, my name is John and in this week's episode of Morning Skin Deep, we will be covering the gross anatomy of the liver and gallbladder in five minutes or less. Before we begin, here are the various sources we have used for this tutorial. Firstly, here is an anterior view of the liver. The liver is the largest internal organ in the body and receives roughly 10-25% to of the body's blood supply at any one time. The liver sits on the right side of the abdomen underneath the diaphragm. When visualizing the liver, it is divided into the right and left lobes by the falciform ligament. Falciform being Latin for sickle-shaped, which is how the ligament hugs the liver. The inferior portion of the falciform ligament ends in a thickened appendage known as the ligamentum teres. Teres denotes a round and smooth structure. Both ligaments are remnants of embryonic development, which no longer serve the same purpose in adulthood. Peeking out under the right lobe is the gallbladder, and exiting superiorly is the inferior vena cava. Next is a posterior view of the liver. To orientate ourselves, here are the right and left lobes. However, on the posterior aspect, the liver has two more lobes. These are the quadrate and caudate lobes. They are separated by a deep fissure known as the prada hepatis. This is a key confluence region in the liver as it contains the vascular entry and exit of the right and left hepatic arteries, accompanied by the portal vein. The right and left hepatic ducts draining bowel away from the liver also exits via the prada hepatis. The gallbladder which stores and concentrates bowel is more prominent on the posterior aspect of the liver. Through the cystic duct, the gallbladder communicates with the common hepatic duct to form the common bowel duct. Here is the posterior continuation of the ligamentum teres, known as the ligamentum venosum. Together with the falciform ligaments anteriorly, the ligamentum venosum forms the right and left coronary ligaments laterally. These ligaments then form the left and right triangular ligaments, which is then continuous with the peritoneum of the diaphragm superiorly. Notice there is a region of the liver not covered by ligaments, known as the bare area of the liver. This is called so because it's the only region of the liver naked from visceral or parietal peritoneum. The key structure in the bare area of the liver is the communication between the inferior vena cava and the hepatic veins. The unique communication is known as a portocaval anastomosis. This provides a collateral pathway for the portal and systemic venous systems to mix. Now let us explore the anatomy of the biliary tree. It begins with the right and left hepatic ducts which drain bowel from the liver. They combine to form the common hepatic duct. Bowel is stored and concentrated in the gallbladder via the reabsorption of water and electrolytes. Bile is then excreted into the cystic duct, which combines with the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct. The common bile duct then unites with the pancreatic duct to form the dilatation known as the ampulla of vata. The distal end of the ampulla opens into the duodenum via the major duodenal papilla. The arterial supply of the gallbladder begins at T12 with the celiac trunk, which has three main branches, namely the left gastric artery, splenic artery and a common hepatic artery. The common hepatic artery has two main branches, the hepatic artery proper and the gastroduodenal artery. The hepatic artery proper terminates as the right and left hepatic artery as they enter the porta hepatis. It is from the right hepatic artery that the cystic artery branches off to supply the gallbladder. The venous drainage mimics the arterial pathway. Now that we have covered the major anatomy, let us return to Mr. Rex. Due to the pattern of fever and rigors, Mr. Rex is suspected to have a bacterial infection. Upon ultrasound investigation, it is discovered that he has an abscess on the bare area of his liver. He is prescribed metronidazole and antibiotic for abscess management. And there we go, the gross anatomy of the liver and gallbladder in under 5 minutes. If you liked today's tutorial, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment below about what you would like to see next.